vigilance, the action or state of keeping careful watch, standing guard, defending the bulwark between the righteous and the godless. Hey everyone, welcome back to Vigilance. I'm Lance Earl, your host. Today we've got uh, a guest. I'm really excited to have him here. His name is Hilber Nelson. Now, uh, uh, Hilber and I met by accident, I guess. He was forming a group in Twin Falls, uh, a group called We the People of Magic Valley, at the same time that I was bringing my group, Men Too, to Twin Falls. So like I said, we met by accident, and it was a good meeting. We've been doing a lot of work together since, and it's my pleasure to have Hilbert Nelson on Vigilance. Welcome, Hilbert. Yeah, thank you very much, Lance. Great to be here. And yeah, I do remember when we met, and we were uh, at a, actually a planning meeting, and it was one of the first meetings we had to plan the Brigitte Gabriel um, talk that's going to happen on August 4th, 7 p.m. at the Broker Auditorium in Twin Falls. Yeah, in fact, it was kind of funny. I remember sitting in that meeting, and about a third of the way into it, I said I had to stop everybody and say, what is this meeting? Who are you people? <laughs> but, yeah, and I remember but it, looking at looking across and going, who is that guy across the table anyway? Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so anyway, why don't you take just a minute, um, Hilbert, if you would, and tell the listeners about We the People of Magic Valley. I would be happy to do that, Lance. Thanks. Well, the genesis for We the People Magic Valley really came out of a common frustration that Act for America, which is the... Um, organization has been founded by Brigitte, a local chapter here in Twin Falls. I was involved in several of their meetings. They're always kind of small. That was also the same thing happening with the local chapter of the John Burke Society. Mm -hmm. And we we had enough members to come and, and enjoy all the talks, but we really weren't mobilizing. We weren't big enough to do much beyond that. So a conversation in April led to us having an organizational meeting you went, I think, about to the second one of them. And the idea was, how can we help each other by maybe promoting a speaker coming into town and really mobilizing and generating awareness of the things that are going on in our town? And, of course, we all know what those are right now with with uh, the controversy sure. about the child molestation. And so that grew into We the People Magic Valley. We've developed a website. People can go there. Uh, by simply logging on we the people m v dot w i x dot com slash home okay uh, this is one of our one of our many many efforts to generate awareness. We also realize that the local newspaper and t v news are not going to be reporting what's uh, going on a concern of a lot of folks either underplaying it or covering it up or just not uh, talking about it. So we, it, you, when you go there, you will see a blog site, you'll see news, you'll see action alerts, you'll see various links. One of them is Daily Post and um, Idaho Second Amendment Alliance, among many others. And so out of that has come now about 30 people that are now regularly meeting once a week to plan the Brigitte Gabriel event on August 4th. So we're really excited to have all the new momentum in just making these plans has really been a turning point for us. Okay. And then Dally, and Dally Post is part also of We the People Magic Valley. Or now, yourself, let, 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 me ask you, let me ask you a question, if I could, Hilber. Um, if people want to get involved, do they have to be part of one of these other groups, you know, like my Amend to group or, or uh, Act for America? Or, I mean, what are the requirements? Or can they just be involved? What's happening right now is we are having uh, adding people to our group through uh, just hearing about what we're doing. Uh, we have a school teacher, we have truck driver, we have uh, moms, we have retired folks, we have vets who are coming to the planning meetings and ready to roll up their sleeves. But uh, better to that will be the, actually the event right after the Brigitte Gabriel event. Our plan is to have a picnic. Uh, slash meet and greet and become uh, more educated on what people can do to join ACT, Twin Falls Chapter, uh, the John Birch Chapter, your organization. And that uh, picnic is going to be the very next day, 
We are still planning on where it's going to be. That's, be, that's Friday, uh, August 5th, correct? August 5th, that's right. So we, uh, we're going to have more of an open house kind of format. The uh, local chapter uh, leaders, probably myself included, will be giving little presentations to answer that big question after you hear what Brigitte has to say, and that is, what can I do here locally that's going to make a difference? All so right. we have to help to have that question answered, and that's the idea is to then grow our actual membership and ranks with uh, a database and then also through this website that I told you about, We the People, Magic Valley. Right now we don't have a sign-up sheet for members, uh, and our planning meeting really doesn't need to get any bigger than it is right now, but uh, right, right after that event. Uh, the things we've also been doing all in the meantime is having our monthly meetings, so people can go to the uh, Act for uh, America local meeting. I think that'll be it is posted on We the People Magic Valley. And I should also say too, when people are interested in getting tickets to the Brigitte Gabriel event, they can go to Eventbrite.com, and that's E V E N. T event and bright is spelled B R I T E dot com. It'll ask you to search for something, uh, an event, and all you do is type in Brigitte Gabriel presentation. For those of you that don't have emails, you can call the We the People Magic Valley phone number about getting tickets to 085 Okay, now these tickets are there, they are at no cost, is that correct? It, it is free. All right. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, uh, everyone, I would really encourage you to be out on the 4th uh, of August and meet Brigitte and hear what she has to say, and then come on out again on the 5th. There will be a lot of things going on there, and I will be there giving away free advanced firearms training. So uh, come on out and uh, <laughs> see if you can win some training. We have mm -hmm. another event coming up as well that I'd like to just touch on real quick. This doesn't have as much to do with Hilber, but... But Hilber and his folks in Twin Falls have been very cooperative in, in uh, providing information for that. And we have Gavin Syme coming to my range in Rockland, Idaho on the 4th of July. Now, he's actually coming in on the 3rd. People are welcome to come, bring their uh, trailers, their tents, whatever. We will have a meet and greet. We'll sit around the campfire, burn hot dogs, uh, burn marshmallows, and just get to know each other. And then on... July the 4th, I will be cooking breakfast. I'm sorry. I know that everyone was anticipating good food. You might have to settle for burnt. But I will be cooking breakfast, and and Gavin will address us after that. And then immediately after that, we're going to go on the range and provide some uh, introductory training for a lot of folks. So bring your guns, bring your uh, patriotism, and bring your appetite. I think we will actually satisfy all. Amend2.com. That's www.amendtwo.com is where you will get information about our 4th of July event with Gavin Syme. Okay, now moving on, Hilber. Your little town has <laughs> attracted a lot of attention of late. Why don't you tell us a little yeah. bit about that? Yes, we have. Just before I uh, move on to that, I there may be some folks or listeners who don't know who Brigitte Gabriel is, Lance. Okay, let's talk they, about that. They may have some sense. And I'll just give a, I'll just read a little blurb about her and why we selected her. First of all, she's the founder of Act for America. She has a couple of wonderful books. One was called Because They Hate. This was the book that kind of woke me up about uh, jihad coming to America sure. on 9-11. But she is a first-hand survivor of Islamic terror in her home country. I believe it's Lebanon. I'm working off memory from the book that I read several years ago. So I'm not yes, it, it is Lebanon. That's correct. Yep. She's an Arab Christian. She's also the best-selling author of that book, Because They Hate and They Must Be Stopped. She's also a leading national security expert. Many people have probably seen her on CNN or Fox News or heard of her. And she's also the founder for Act America, so she's very well qualified. She's also a dynamo speaker. We do not know what the topic of her, uh, what her presentation is going to be, but we know it's going to be very relevant. And uh, I encourage people, if you aren't really too sure about what's really going on, 
with jihad coming to America and the, the threat that this poses to us, I recommend you come and come with an open mind and also uh, just join us out for the picnic if you can stay the next day if you're coming from out of town. We would love to see you there, and I'd love to meet you there. So that's for Jeet Gabriel. Sounds awesome. so We're really excited about that. Actually, before we get going again, uh, Hilbert, yeah. I did the same thing. Uh, <laughs> Gavin Syme, real quickly. Gavin Syme is a uh, nationally known liberty speaker from western Washington. And Gavin actually came to my attention a couple of years ago when the state of Washington passed a law that was completely and utterly in violation of the Constitution. Gavin Syme put together a uh, 2,000-person protest. Now, it wasn't a rally. It, well, it, actually, it wasn't really even a protest. It was a nullification event. 2,000 people showed up in the shadow of the Capitol Dome in Olympia, Washington, and blatantly violated that unconstitutional law, stating we will not comply. And in so doing, they were able to get that law killed. So anyway, that's Gavin. That's Brigitte. Now, Twin Falls. What's in the news? Twin Falls. Well, what's been in the news has been since June 7th when maybe maybe many of your listeners are familiar with uh, some reporting that came out of Twin Falls, uh, starting with KNBT. I don't see anything coming from directly from uh, the Times News, which is our one and only newspaper here, but uh, reporting about a June 2nd sexual assault at Bond Book Apartments involving um, what were first reported as uh, Syrian uh, refugees. Um, and the, the way that they report this is really quite interesting as I'm looking at the article here because it's very soft. You don't hear any specific details uh, other than what I just pretty much told you. Sure. And what they did make note of is that the College of Southern Idaho Refugee Center and Muslim Community have come under fire by a small but vocal minority in the community who put blame on the June 2nd sexual assault on three Syrian refugees. Mm -hmm. The director of the refugee center said Syrian refugees don't exist in Twin Falls. Well, then the next thing that we hear uh, is a Times News opinion uh, I have here um, on June 22nd that says that the entire story about a knife-wielding refugees being Syrian, the victim being a child, the attack um, that is being condoned by the Muslim parents, by these uh, children, and so on and so forth, uh, is completely false. The entire story was false, uh, as reported by the Times News Opinion article on June 22nd. Okay. And then it moves on with, not all opponents of the refugee resettlement are racist, bigots, and liars, but in this instance has proven that some clearly are. And again, there is a small group of people living in Twin Falls County whose life goal is to eliminate refugees, and thus far they have not been constrained by the truth. Um, it goes on to say that ruthless refugee opponents exploited the girl and sought to bring out not the better angels of our nature, but the worst. Um, both uh, uh, Twin Falls County Prosecutor Grant Loebs and um, the Chief of Police for Twin Falls, Kingsbury, deserve congratulations for taking a stand for the truth um, that, that they didn't have to speak about this case outright. But as for the refugee opponents who concocted the despicable lie, they're simply art words to describe the shame and contempt you deserve. Well, what had happened of course, as many, many of you might know, is that the story originally when it appeared in, on the 7th was underreported. And then stories started coming out, and they were, as you can see even on our website, they are noted as alleged and that the reports aren't confirmed. Uh -huh. That story that appeared in our on our website was also picked up by other uh, new sites such as InfoWars, Breitbart, and Judge, Judge Report. And that's when Twin Falls really got national attention. Now, um, one, one, one thing I'd like to just clarify yeah. here, Hilbert, if I could. Um, mm -hmm. Now, when the story first came out, news wasn't covering it. 
the the media was pretty much ignoring it and people were scrambling for information as best they could and so we had this this story that it was Syrian refugees we had a story that or we there was someone that said that that there may have been a knife involved and you know some of these things now the thing that we have to make absolutely clear is that some of these things were inaccurate but they don't change the fact that a five-year-old girl was sexually assaulted and that she was sexually assaulted in a pretty brutal fashion she was stripped of her clothing she was sexually assaulted she was urinated on she was you know some some horrible things happened here and so while I think we would all say yes it turns out that they were not Syrian they were in fact instead the reports are now that they were Sudanese and uh, Iraqi. Is that correct? I believe that's right. I, under, I understand Sudanese. Okay. The, so the point being that they were uh, they were refugees. Uh-huh. So the but the okay. but the important point I think that we have to remember is that these these young men came from a society where women are not well respected. These young men came from a society where especially infidel women, non-believing women, are, are not respected and oftentimes persecuted. Mm-hmm. And, and that is the real story here, is that, that we have imported people that have a different idea of what is appropriate and what is right. And that idea must be exposed, and it must be dealt with. It, because this is not, I, I've heard people talking about this being, oh, just kids experimenting. No, no, this is not. A boy and a girl playing doctor. This is not a boy and a girl who are curious and, and you know, figure, trying to figure things out for themselves. This goes far beyond that. There is a level of cruelty and abuse in this that is, unfortunately, endemic in those countries where these boys came mm-hmm. from. Yeah. And this storyline is follows what many people came up to me and were concerned about while I was working on the petition drive here starting in November last year to end the CSI Refugee Center. Uh, I had many people coming up to me right after the San Bernardino Christmas party attack saying, where do I sign? I am so concerned about importing this culture, this ideology, uh, Sharia law, Islamic law, um, and with no end in sight, and very concerned that the CSI Refugee Center has no guarantees for our safety and that the official narrative is everything's awesome, shut up, go to sleep, everything's great, you have nothing (laughs) to worry about, and any criticism of it means you're an Islamophobe or you're a bigot or you're a hater or you're a violent extremist simply because you have security concerns, and here we are. It's now June 26th. And we have one, a big story that even has caught the attention of the White House. And let's turn our attention to the attention that came from the White House. I assume that you're talking yeah. about uh, U.S. Attorney Wendy Olson. Is that correct? That's, that's right, Lance. I have here an article from World Met Daily. It came out on the 25th. Explosive new twists in Idaho sex assault case. And here we have U.S. Attorney for Wendy uh, Upper Idaho, Wendy Olson, who was appointed by President Obama in 2010. And she has come out saying that the spread of false information or inflammatory and threatening statements about perpetrators of this crime deserves their attention so that we no longer are spreading falsehoods about refugee, refugees that divides our community. On one hand, I'm glad that she's concerned that we don't in our community have incendiary statements. But again, we were not reporting lies. We were we were kind of doing what the news media wasn't doing. We were doing their job and saying there have been allegations and let's get down to the bottom of it. But what do we find her mostly concerned about? We hear her making statements uh, such as last year that we need to be vigilant against bias crimes. We need to be concerned about groups that talk about anti-refugee or anti-Muslim. And as Ann Corcoran, Refugee Resettlement Watch blog, has said, Olson's statements really sound an awful lot like uh, Attorney General Loretta Lynch 
They <laughs> well, yeah. why, why wouldn't they? They're both appointees yeah. of the same man who who yeah. has an agenda, who has has done a lot of things that are negative to our country. But you know, as as I read through this and I'm actually it's interesting because I have a different article about the same topic. And Let's uh, hear it. uh yeah, we're we're going yeah. to talk about that. Wendy yeah. Wendy Olson she, what she said is that false information or inflammatory or threatening statements are against the law. Well, that's true about threatening statements. But false information or inflammatory statements, there there are protections under the Second Amendment for that, and that is according to, let me pull this up. His name is uh, Eugene Vol, Volokha. I'm not sure how to say his last name. It's V-O-L-O-K-H, and it was written on June 26th. But uh, he is uh, a a constitutional expert. He is uh, he teaches constitutional law and defends uh, freedom of speech and freedom of religion. And he said, let me see if I can find this. He said, this, it seems to me, goes beyond calling for accuracy and trying to deter threats, which are indeed criminally punishable. The prosecutor backed by the might of the federal government, is not just condemning threatening statements. She is equally condemning inflammatory statements about the perpetrators of the crime uh, as well as the spread of false information. He goes on to say, there is no First Amendment exception for inflammatory statements and even false statements about matters of public concern. The Supreme Court has repeatedly held that they are an inviolable part of free debate. So in other words, this is this is what <laughs> this is what I get from this. First of all, it is a crime to threaten someone. She was right to that point. Secondly, as we talk about things, I mean, let's let's be real, even if we just say this is a horrible crime, that could be interpreted as inflammatory. And and we have the right to say that. Attorney General or uh, U.S. Attorney Wendy Olson, in my opinion, has violated the First Amendment in a huge way. But Hilbert, I did something weird. I mean, this is strange. I know respectable people don't do this, but I was actually reading my Constitution this morning. Oh my gosh, you are a, you are an extremist. <laughs> I am, <laughs> and and I and I went through the section which talks about the powers of the judiciary. And the simple truth is this, Uh, Wendy Olson has no authority over policing activities inside the state. This is none of her business. And I would like to, at this point, actually call her out right here, right now, to get your Constitution and call me and schedule a time to have a debate on this program, because I welcome Wendy Olson to come here and talk about it because she cannot crack open her constitution and defend her actions. The two are so it's completely opposite of each other. So anyway, she is out of line. So absolutely. And again, this is just like what Ann Corcoran was saying from refugee resettlement is that this is the federal government trying to intimidate uh, us into silence. Any citizens who have a different opinion about refugee resettlement that will not bow to the official uh, globalist narrative that that's happening not only here in our country, but as we can see all over Europe and is now starting to be a, be a big part of what's breaking up the European Union, 23 nations. And one of the big parts I think that led to the, the Brexit was people realizing this, you know, overreach by an elite, by a globalist that doesn't have their country and their interests at heart and is just out of control. So the idea that the White House can appoint somebody to now intimidate us and take away our free speech and our right to self-determination in these areas is just as you say, it's a complete overreach. And that's why it's so important to come here what Virgie Gabriel's talking about because she will say, Things along the lines of we are not being able to identify who the enemy is because you can't put Islam and terrorists together. We don't have an administration or government that is 
really doing its job, and so we have to do the job ourselves. And I think that's why you're seeing people buying thousands of firearms per day now in this country. Do you, do you recall, Lance, what we heard, say it was on, uh, I have to go look it up, on Drudge Report about how many firearms are being sold each day now since this uh, last shooting in Orlando? It's amazing. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't see that particular report, but I yeah. have seen the numbers are massive, yes. Yeah, I'll look it up, but I think yeah. that, that people just are in, in noticing that we're not really safe. No, we're 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 not, we're not we're not being protected by those who have been elected to protect us. This is one other thing I found that was interesting. It just, just popped into my mind. Your your county prosecutor, Grant. How was you say his last name? Yeah, his name is uh, Grant Willis. He's the Twin Falls County prosecutor. Yeah. Okay. Well, he recently, with regard to the uh, resettlement project that's going on over at the college, said that it's a federal issue. Uh, so I would like to actually call him out as well. You are welcome here anytime. I dare you to call me and bring your Constitution because the federal government only has authorization to administer naturalization, which is, of course, the process of how a person who has gotten here legally transfers himself from being uh, a, a non-citizen to a citizen. But the federal government has no authority over immigration, and it's a crying shame that your prosecutor doesn't know the Constitution well enough to uphold his own oath and protect us from this federal overreach. This is this is part of the narrative, too, that if uh, those of us who went to the CSI board meeting, when you have an open forum and uh, registered their complaint to the board about the refugee resettlement policy, and the answer you get back from the mainstream media is that this is a federal issue and you really don't have a say about it. The It says starts at the top and they're right about that in the sense that UN policy is what's dictating it and then it's uh, enforced through the State Department. Then it comes through these organizations like CSI Refugee Resettlement. And I think there are five agencies in the state of Idaho. Uh, Agency for the Americas is one in Boise. CSI gets pretty, the CSI Refugee Center pretty much gets marching orders, you know, and it's federal dollars. And I think that's our beef, is that we're not against immigration. We're not against Muslims. We're not against people coming here. It's the way it's being handled that gives us a security risk. And if you look at the epic fail by the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security, uh, even after the gun sh- uh, owner, the gun shop, called the FBI about that Orlando shooter, you see one epic fail after another. But what do we hear in the newspaper? Do we hear anything about investigations or people losing their jobs or being reprimanded? Any criticism of the FBI? Absolutely none. All we hear about is gun control, gun control, gun control, sure. taking away your rights as a law-abiding citizen. It's a gun control problem, not an epic security fail problem that starts all the way from the FBI. So that's well, the feeling we get. We just get this this federal authority overreach that assumes that they have the authority to come in and just change your community without your say, but after the benefits run out nine months later, the bill is on you. Well, I think, uh, you know, we're, we're about out of time, Hilbert, but let's, oh, okay. maybe, maybe let's, maybe let's just close by talking about what a real immigrant is as opposed to how they're being defined today. And I like to use the example, if I may, of my great-grandfather. Now, he was born in Denmark. He was, uh, he was a bastard when bastard didn't mean bastard. He was the illegitimate child of a woman. He grew up in, uh, in an orphanage where illegitimate children pay for the sins of their parents. You know, it, that's how it was back in those days. And when he was 17 years old, he managed to arrange for passage to America by working on the ship as it crossed the Atlantic Ocean. Now, when he arrived in America, he was pretty worthless. He, he couldn't speak English. He had no money. He really had no education. But he wanted to be an American. He wanted to no longer be Danish, and he wanted to come and be an American. And the other key part of of what immigration used to be is he came here 
on his own dime and at great personal expense. Now, my family story is not a lot unlike yours, I would bet. I, I'm sure that, you know, go back a few generations, Hilber, you've got the same thing in your family. Very, very much so on my father's side, yeah. And so this is what we need to recognize is we are very much, very much pro-immigration. But we believe that an immigrant must be a person who is willing to work and sacrifice to come here. And when he gets here, he doesn't continue to fly the Danish flag like my grandfather, you know, chose not to do. They don't continue to fly the Mexican flag. They don't continue to fly the Islamic flag or preach Sharia or any of that nonsense. And if they come here, regardless of whether they're Muslim or otherwise, if that is their their intent, if that is their desire to come here and integrate into the American culture and become an American, they are all welcome. And until then, my personal feelings are close the door. Any Mm -hmm. final comments, Hilbert? I'll let you close. Yeah. I have a grandparents with a similar uh, story on my father's side. They even softened the name Nielsen to Nelson to make it sound more American and uh, join with other uh, folks from Denmark into the Racine, Wisconsin area and really acculturated themselves into the community, opened up bakeries. My grandfather was a cobbler and they learned English and, and then my father uh, uh, was part of the war and moved to Seattle area where I was born and became, literally was, a American, lived as an American and very patriotic that way. What we see today is really not so much immigration, I think, by the UN as it is being um, uh, instigated all over Europe and now in the United States, but what we're seeing is really more of a social engineering uh, program to dilute cultures, to make them less distinctive, more uh, egalitarian. Uh, and we're seeing really very little in the way of helping the uh, immigrant become acculturated. I do have some success stories here in my community. The Times News has done a good job of talking about those. And I have firsthand experience of those folks. And one is about ready to get her license in a trade and is thrilled to be here. And so we, we do. We, like you, we, we champion that. We are for that. But the way it, that the immigration policy is being conducted, that's our beef. Uh, exactly. And now we have this, we have our mess on our hands right now because of immigration policy as it is conducted with an epic fail from the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security. And again, the only thing they harp on is takes the guns away from American citizens. You're exactly right. Thank you, Gilbert. Yeah. I, I, I appreciate yeah. you being with us today. July 4th, Gavin Syme. Get your information at www.amend2.com. And on August 4th, Brigitte Gabrielle. And what's that website again, Hilbert? Okay, everyone go to www.eventbrite, that's one word, and bright is spelled B-R-I-T-E, dot com. And when you do your search for the event, simply type in Brigitte Gabriel presentation. And we look forward to seeing everybody come on uh, August 4th, 7 p.m. There you go. You have it. Hey, folks, we hope to see you out at these events. Together we can stand. Together we can make a difference. I'm Lance Earl. I'll see you soon.